Are you looking to build something cool out of shipping containers? Picture this, this whole pad right here, this is a perfect slab on grade or thickened edge slab foundation for your shipping container project. In this video, we're gonna explore different foundation options for container-based structures and specifically, potentially container homes in seismic areas. We have a thickened edge slab foundation, we're pouring a slab on grade foundation, and we also are doing a sort of wrap foundation. We're also gonna talk about different types of rebar technology. We're gonna be utilizing fiberglass rebar and your traditional steel rebar. There's also a helical type of rebar that you can mix right into the truck. And then lastly, we'll talk about under slab insulation. So the different methods of doing that and show you our favorite spray foam insulation. Hope you learned something. So the difference between a slab on grade and a thickened edge slab is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, your edge is thicker and you do that by bending some rebar in this shape. So you bend it so that you can tie a uh, top layer of rebar and a bottom layer of rebar perpendicular to these here along the edge. And then that gives you basically the ability to pour your footing and your slab all in one pour. Another interesting thing that a lot of people commented on our double wide video is to pocket the corner casting. So in order to mitigate this floor sag, even when on a concrete pad, it's still gonna sag a half inch or 12 mil because the bottom channel is higher up than the corner castings. So these corner castings here in the concrete, if you made a 12 millimeter recession where the corner castings go, now your shipping container is gonna provide even pressure all the way across the concrete slab and really distribute your weight downwards into the earth. So here's an example of just a slab on grade. So we only got about four or five inches of concrete. And this is where, for this instance, if we're gonna be driving over this with our skid steer or forklifts, we're just gonna break the concrete right off. And that's why we want that thickened edge, but potentially on edges of a container home or something where there was no real load bearing down to the soil, that's probably okay. Also, I've got a chunk of this fiberglass rebar and I really wanna show you. So you can see right here, all these little strands. We broke it to really look at it. There's a ton of little spider web strands and they're glass strands. And it's, the story is that this is stronger than the steel rebar and I can definitely see how it will not corrode rust and erode the integrity of the slab over time. So interesting thing. Another thing is you can carry a whole bundle of these for you know same weight as two or three lengths of rebar. So it's super, uh, uh, easy on the back when you're spreading out your rebar and tying everything. Please help us out, give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. And you can also help us out by letting me know why the concrete contractor decided to choose to put steel rebar along the bottom and then fiberglass rebar along the top. My guess, and he said I was right, but I don't know if I think he was just telling me I was right to make me feel good, is that maybe where the two chunks of rebar meet, there'd be opportunity for cracks and that's where moisture gets in and cause additional rusting. But I'm not sure, please help me out. Comment down below, let me know if he's just bullshitting me or if it's truly an intelligent decision to offset between one or the other or was this all that's left in Saskatoon and that's why he showed up with this. While we're inside our new building, I might as well show off a screw pile or a pier style foundation. So some people use uh, pilings and then they'll build like a concrete footing, which I don't really suggest. Why would you go from concrete back to steel? You might as well use a metal screw pile and then an I-beam if you need some sort of a footing structure to span longer distances. So that's definitely a better way to go and could warrant its own video. But here you can see these massive five and a half inch screw piles. These things are drilled 20 feet down and they really transfer a lot of load down to the earth and nothing's moving there. But the issue in seismic zones with screw piles is that you need some sort of an isolator plate. So they'll actually move with the earth and then your whole structure moves. So for California and stuff, that's why a lot of people want to start. They think they're going to go with a, a piling style foundation and then guess what? They end up switching. The easiest way to get past the regulators, just pour a concrete slab, slap the containers down, bolt them down. You're good to go start building. Before we spray foamed, we spread rock all the way around here and then we have all of these conduits coming up through the now spray foam. And you can see how well the spray foam adhered to all these conduits and it is fully air sealed from any moisture getting through there or other things like radon, which is a big concern up here in Canada anyway. So 
Love it, that's the, another just a huge advantage of it over top of rigid foam and then I can't say it enough, when you walk on rigid foam that's spread on gravel, it's just all moving on you where this is just solid. Now we can work in here, tie all of our uh, pex lines and rebar and just perfect footing the whole time. When looking at under slab insulation, obviously the best way to go is spray foam. And in this instance, it is cheaper to use spray foam than using rigid foam. And it is just so solid. It is fully air sealed just this great vapor barrier underneath our slab. So we're gonna be doing hydronic heat inside of here and all that heat is gonna radiate upwards. And that is especially important if you're using our wood stud brackets that mount on the outside of a shipping container to build a container structure. Those, you can actually now continue your studs right down to the concrete slab. So if you had an eight foot wide container home, pour a nine foot slab. If you have a 16 foot wide container home, pour a 17 foot slab and then your walls can come right down to a seal seal, a treated bottom plate, and then traditional framing upwards from that. And that's gonna stop any rodents or insects from getting into your wall system. So raft foundations are basically like a slab on grade, but they're way thicker. And you typically have a couple courses of rebar. These are often done in a basement type foundation where you can have some earth or some aggregate coming upwards and similar instance to this where you do your full foam layer and come up where you've excavated your hole and potentially your your house or something ends right here but you can see right here we have like 12 inches or so of concrete coming in here oh 16 inches it's gonna get expensive but here so we'll have a couple layers of rebar and our uh, in-floor heat in here maybe even double stack that but that solid foundation that can handle a ton of weight. Once you want to start going really large with a container home structure, you're probably better just to space your containers apart and then build traditionally around it, between it, wherever. So we're back here now uh, with the rebar all tied and you can see the two layers of rebar with this raft style foundation. And we also have the PEX lines in here. So the PEX lines are way down at the bottom. Hopefully it's gonna radiate that heat all the way up, but that spray foam down there is the under slab insulation. We know it's gonna work good. And we have auxiliary heat pump heaters in here anyway. But yeah, this is exactly how it goes. And then we have a 15M or 5 8 rebar, 12 inches on center, double stack. So this is gonna handle a ton of weight in here. That gives us a lot of provision in our shop here, where if we have a bunch of heavy equipment coming in here, it's gonna handle that. And so if you're building a container home or something, and again, like I said, going three high and you got a ton of weight coming down to the ground. This is the type of foundation that you're gonna want. Uh, we've been tying a ton of rebar and I'm not envious of anyone that does that job for a living because it's hard work with this 15M rebar, 12 inches on center. It is a ton of work. And that is why we talked about that helical rebar. So the micro helix rebar, it's just boxes of these basically little slivers of, of metal and you pour that into the truck and it gets mixed into the truck and you pour it right in on the slab. And you'd think that there'd be all these little metal spikes poking out of your finished concrete when it's done, but it all trowels in nicely. And I think it's the way of the future. The only real issue with it is that a lot of the inspectors that are 75 years old at the municipalities, they're expecting to see real rebar and uh, they don't really accept new technologies. And so they're definitely in your way. And then once you get to larger slabs where you're having to double stack your rebar, then you're definitely gonna want at least some rebar in there but I can totally see how that would work to mitigate cracks and, and things like that where, or a lot of contractors, they don't even lift their rebar. And so at least if it's mixed in with the concrete, you know you got something somewhere. So this is looking very good in here now in our shop. It's coming together. The last thing we have to do is just run some core lines so for the data to go to different areas of our shop. That's gonna help our YouTube channel, but also uh, just give us power everywhere and complete flexibility. And so here you can see this core line. It's a flexible conduit that just gets buried into the concrete floor. A lot of the other big two, three inch conduits we actually put underneath the foam where this is flexible enough to round even in a five inch slab. So it's, if you're doing some forethought and you want to run data, low voltage, or just smaller high voltage wire, that's an amazing way to prep your slab. And it's a cheap way compared to afterwards when you have to pipe in with galvanized or versions like this. And that's all exposed as well. So instead of running that wire, say if it was to another doorway low down and going across and over doors and whatever, get her in the slab ahead of time. So think about everything that you're doing in your project and get all of your utilities in your slab buried. So you just got a nice crisp 
finished product when you're done. So we've really provisioned everywhere in here, inside the slab to have power, data, heating, strength, everything in this slab. We are back and I am standing on concrete. It's been a long time coming. And this concrete here, this is beautiful. This is the best job that I have ever seen ever. And it's in my shop and that makes me very happy. So compared to the stuff that's poured outside and finished, this is just amazing. And, and so now it's all um, sealed and we've actually cut all the control lines as well. You can tell that the people know what they're doing when they cut the control lines. They did an envelope cut to the floor drains. That's, uh, if you've ever tiled a shower before, you know that's a very important cut, but you can just see that all the water is gonna be flowing into these in our uh, modification side of the shop. And then my prototyping side is nice and flat and also over in our shipping and receiving department. So I'm really excited to have this all done. Now it is time to build our bathrooms, build our mechanical rooms, and then we are moving over here. And this is where our YouTube channel, this is where all the action is gonna be happening, right here in this building. This is gonna make so much better videos. And so if you enjoyed this video, please help us out. Give it a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe to that channel. And we are going to do container mods. So I hope you learned something.